Uh, so this is our studio set for Swashbuckle. Yeah, it's cool. Babies. Yeah, it's pretty big. Um, this is the biggest studio uh, in Media City. Okay. Uh, called HQ1. So they've done stuff like The Voice in here, Dragon's Den. Oh, this is The Voice? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we were here last year as well. And as a, for a children's set, it's pretty epic, really. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, that is a three-storey kind of soft play centre thing, trying to find that balance between soft play centre and themed shipwreck so that kids have, as they watch it, they've got some, you know, identifiable, ah, oh, that's like the thing down the road that we go to <laughs> when it rains and when mum needs a rest. Um, but uh, yeah, make it look fantastic. And the TV. kids are going to be wired when they come in here, right? They're pumped. Now that we're doing the second series and they know what it is, yeah, they yeah. come in and they can't believe that they're, that they're here, really. So they know all the catchphrases, they know when to cheer, which is massively helpful. Um, it's good fun. That's really cool. So what other series have you worked on? Um, I've worked on Mr. Bloom's Nursery. That was my show for CBeebies. So we did, I did three series of that and uh, it's gone on to do another couple of series since. But that's been really good fun to kind of set that up and, and see how that's flown. That was really good. I did the CBeebies Christmas production last year, doing that again this year. So they keep me busy. So you're a series producer, right? So what does that mean? Um, as a series producer, I'm the most senior kind of person on the team full time. So I'll have an exec producer, but they'll oversee more than one program. So okay. I'm on this kind of all the time. I've been here from the moment it was commissioned through all the pre-production period as we've planned it. I'm here in the studio all the time. Wow. I'm ultimately responsible for the budget and the editorial of it all. And I'll see it all the way through until the post-production we've edited it and we've delivered it. So the kind of the right. buck stops with me really you know we've got over 100 kids involved in this series it's up to me to personally kind of sign all their licenses so that legally we can use them if there's any health and safety stuff it kind of stops wow. with me i have to be across everything and how many professionals have you got like, working here on a program like this i think on this team we've got um i think it's just over 50 for, okay. for a three-week period where we're knocking out two shows a day which is a heck of a schedule really especially in a, in a, in a set this size really but okay. I'm constantly trying to ride that um, not got a huge budget because we're a preschool program but okay. trying to get the most out of it and so that's a that's a tough kind of tension to manage all the time I have just had the most brilliant idea what is it since it was my breakfast that gave you the hiccups in the first place, maybe my lunch will take it away again. So on your first mark, you're saying, I've had a brilliant idea. Yeah. Um, brilliant idea, yeah. You can run on since it was my breakfast that gave you the hiccups in the first place, but then we need to just stop you for maybe my lunch will make them go away. So why, um, why children's TV? Yeah, I, I've been thinking about that. I. It's really weird for me, coming out of university, I didn't think of doing anything but children's. I'd done okay. loads of youth work, children's work when I was young, and uh, it just felt like the natural fit. I kind of didn't really question it. Um, so I suppose I like the fact that when I was young, I loved children's TV. Yeah. You know, I think we can all remember something that we watched when we were young that's really yeah. stuck with us. And so for me, there's that real, a real attraction to be making stuff now that you know kids are still going to be remembering in like right, 20, right. 30 years time. And I think there's a, I really enjoy the fact that everything you do can be both educational and entertaining. You know, you will never do something that is just one or the other. Yeah. So I actually think it's, it's really challenging to do children's programs. Most people or a lot of people can use it as the way into the industry. Right. But I think there's a real specialism, there's a real you know, expertise that you can build up there. So that's why I like So, that. I mean, you're a committed Christian. I mean, how does, your, um, how does your faith inform you in all of this? I suppose as a series producer, I want my faith to inform how I, how I kind of manage the team, how I run the team, the kind of vibe that we have as we do it. You know, I've worked on loads of shows myself where the producer or the series producer is just a stress ball, you know, and, it, and it's right. not a pleasant place to work. Yeah, because there must be a lot of ego flying around and stuff like this, right? Because it is media, isn't it? So, <laughs> you know, you have, uh, us guys, you have this sort of image of media being quite kind of ego and stuff, and 
presenter personalities and yeah yeah there's big personalities flying around yeah it can be absolutely and it's not just people kind of on screen but you know off screen people will have their kind of egos or their experience that they Uh, bring to it all really um but yeah i guess the kind of where i really want to where i really want my faith to kind of rubber hit the road is when people are working on the team and they feel something different about how how it's being run or they feel something different about the culture or the you know the vibe in the studio and I think um, so last series on Swashbuckle we just had it was a family feel that a lot of people were saying they'd never experienced before in TV Mm. Um, and I I'm all about that kind of love that and if I can have any opportunity to say to people well you know I don't think that's a coincidence that we have that I'm praying hard for the for the show you know I'm walking around the studio every day having a little pray and uh, yeah and deliberately trying to bring a kind of a lightness and an energy to it then I hope that's a bit of a you know a bit of a light to them really but you better not be busy seaweed slots Captain, this is completely different. This is sloppy seaweed fizz. And uh, Joseph, on that point, make sure you've, you've got it. Afterwards, fizz. You have-